Hey, yo, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Um, as always, thank you for supporting my channel. Thank you for coming here and watching. I appreciate you guys. Um, if you're new to my channel, go ahead and subscribe to the channel because you're going to come back. Uh, my channel is primarily just about medical field advice. You know, what you know should you get into, what not to get into. Um, I don't say not to get into. I just try to give you information on what probably fits you better at the moment or in your life or what you probably would like. Uh, I'm a radiology technologist, you know, by career, and uh, I talk a lot about, you know, radiology technologist on here because that's what I know, but I've been in the medical field for like 13 years, so I like to give you a little bit about, I know a little bit about everything because I've been in there for so long and I worked in a few places, so I like to give you information on certain careers that, you know, might suit you better than radiology. Um, I don't try to persuade you to get into radiology, I mean, I'm not here for that. Uh, I'm here to help you make the best decision for you at the moment and maybe for your future. So, uh, welcome. So in today's video, what I want to talk to you about is the top paying modalities in radiology. So as everybody knows, well, if you don't know, uh, radiology technologist RT is, is your foundation. And then from there, you can build and grow and do other things, you know? So um uh, i want to talk to you about the different modalities and how much they pay everybody's like oh how much they get paid and what do you have to do to get into that you know career wise or whatever so i'm here for that okay so the first one is radiology technologist of course rt and this is basically your foundation like i always tell you um this one takes you two years to complete two-year program um, at your traditional college, you know, your state college, you know, it takes two years. If you go to a private college, you know, some private colleges take 16 months, you know, so, um, but the average is two years, you know, and the average pay for a radio technologist uh, from where I'm from in Florida is between 25 and 30 an hour. Some a little bit more, some a little bit less, depending on where you work, uh, whether it's hospital, imaging center, um, everything plays a part, you know, so it depends on where you live and what you do, you know, as far as like where you work at. So an RT starts off at 25 to 30 an hour. Then, you know, if you want to branch out, you can do CT. So CT is CAT scan, which is this. So a CAT scan technologist is, a, is another modality to, you know, another step up. And uh, that can take, it depends where you go again. You know, there's a school in Florida that I always talk about um, in Miami and it's three months to become a CT tech. And uh, that, for a CT tech, you're making 30 to 35 an hour. Um, and like I said, uh, private school in Miami takes three months. If you go to a traditional way, which is not a bad route either, um, and you go to your state college, that usually takes between six months to a year. Um, not sure why it takes longer at state colleges, maybe because you meet once a week. I'm not sure to be honest. I mean, everything's different and, um, you know, that's to your, to your choice, right? And your due diligence, you gotta make, you gotta do research to see what's gonna be, what's gonna fit better for you. Um, the next mode that you can do, um, is MRI. So MRI, they get paid between 35 and 40 an hour, depending on where you live, of course. I'm just talking about Florida, you know, Florida salaries. Um, and the same thing, you know, if you go to the school in Miami that takes three months, they also have MRI. But make sure you have to be an RT first. Let me make that clear. You can't just go to the school and become an MRI tech or a CT tech in three months. You have to be an RT certified tech already. That's why I say that RT is your foundation. You do that first and then you can go to these schools and, and you know, elevate, you know. Um, so MRI takes make make 35 to 40 an hour, you know. Um, so that's one. Now, if you like this, ultrasound technologists, a lot, a lot of females like ultrasound because they want to see babies and they want to get into that, you know, um, type of field, which is awesome. You know, that's super cool. Um, that's nice to do and uh, that so the cool thing about let me tell you the cool thing about radiology right a lot of people don't know this if you go to ultrasound tech school first it takes two years to become an ultrasound tech two years right nothing wrong with it is that what you want to do you think that's what you want to do for your career go for it but if you go for RT first and then you decide to go to ultrasound you only have to do it one year 
But if you go to ultrasound first, that takes two years and you say, you know what, I wanna do x-ray, you gotta go back to school for two years. So if you go to RT first and then ultrasound, it saves you one year. Um, and the average salary for ultrasound is, be, is I think it's the same as MRI, like 35 to 40 an hour. Um, but uh, again, in ultrasound, there's so many different branches you could get into, abdominal, vascular, um, cath, um, cardiac. There's so many things you can do in ultrasound as well. So if that's what interests you, that's awesome. Great money, a um, lot of responsibility, but it's awesome. Um, the next one is this. Yes, mammo. This is mostly for females, of course. Males cannot be mammal techs because... You know, it's just, you just can't do it, you know, because, um, you know, you mess with, you know, females breasts and stuff. So that's 100% female. And 90% of the time you can learn this on the job, depending on what hospital you work at. And uh, I think it's only, I think from what I've heard, this is probably the easiest registry to pass is the mammal tech. All these registries, all these modalities I'm talking about, whether it's CT, MRI, ultrasound, all these come with tests that you have to take and you have to pass. MAMO as well. So MAMO, you have to take a test. I think, but they said this is the easiest one to pass. And I think for MAMO, you only have to have a 40 hour class and you have to do 200 MAMOs per year to keep your license up. Um, so that's something that, you know, you want to think about. But the cool thing about MAMO is that it's set hours, Monday through Friday, 8 to 4.30. There's no weekends, no overnight, no on-call, none of that. So it's an awesome work-life balance um, to become a mammal tech. Uh, it's a lot of paperwork, but I think it's worth it, you know, um, especially if you like radiology, but you want to get into a better um, home work-life balance, mammal is, is it's the way to go. Um, the next one is PET scan. The PET scan is um, nuclear medicine and CT tech together. Uh, PET scan is primarily um, looks for cancer in patients um, and their rate is I think it's between 30 and 35 an hour for my research um, again this is like I said it's Florida Florida pay I know California is gonna be like oh California you get paid a hundred dollars an hour yes yeah I do and it's the cost of living as well even though the cost of living is going crazy everywhere but te Texas and uh, and California pay way more than than other states for sure. Um, so PET scan, you know, um, it's pretty cool. I guess I never thought about it to be honest. The next one that people talk about is this radiation therapy. So to become a radiation therapist, you have to, you you can there's two routes you can choose, right? You can do RT foundation first and then go to radiology technology radiation therapy school for one year um and get it done there's there's limited schools in the u.s though that have radiation therapy uh not too many people teach it but if you want to go straight into radiation therapy it's a two-year associates program um so it's either route you want to take and again radiation therapy you know deals with cancer patients um, and their salary is, I think it's pretty nice. I think it's between 40 and 50 an hour and, uh, they have good hours as well. You know, Monday through Friday, you know, eight to four thirty, you know, type thing. But that's another thing that you have to deal with. You know, it's hard to deal with cancer patients. You know, some have good, some have good outcomes. Some have don't got good outcomes. So it all depends on what, you know, what kind of personality you have, you know? Um, some people take, you know, it, it, it takes a lot on you, you know, uh, to see sick patients, real sick patients on a daily basis, you know, so that's something to think about. The money is great. The work life balance is great, but mentally it takes a certain, a certain person to, to get into that field, you know? Um, the next one is nuclear medicine tech, uh, nuclear medicine tech, like I said before, is one of those, um, so it takes two years to become a nuclear medicine tech. Again, if you go for RT first, then you go to nuclear medicine tech is usually a year. Um, if you looked at my videos prior, um, nuclear medicine tech is one of those modalities that are declining. Um, I'm guessing maybe the next five to 10 years, nuclear medicine tech probably would not exist only because they use isotopes and isotopes are getting hard to come by. So everything's going to MRI, CT, you know, so um, nuclear medicine probably won't be around for too long. 
but I'm not trying to discourage you not to get into it. But if you do, you make pretty good money, um, 35 to 40 an hour. Um, they're, they're on call a lot because there's limited nuclear medicine techs. There's not too many nuclear medicine techs out there. So most hospitals have one, maybe two if they're lucky. And you know that one or two um, tech have to be on call because they're limited. Um, the reason they'll be on call is 90% of the time when you have, um, like for CT, if you come, if you get a patient to the ER that has shortness of breath and stuff and the doctor, the ER doctor thinks that they're going to need a, they have a pulmonary embolism in their lungs and say they're allergic to contrast, to iodine contrast, say their labs are too high and they can't get the iodine contrast. Um, they call nuclear medicine to take it and they do a VQ scan and only nuclear medicine tech, techs do that. Um, so that's the only reason you will probably be get called in for as a nuclear medicine tech. Um, so again, not a, I ain't gonna say it's a great career and I'm gonna say it's a bad career, but it's one to really do your due diligence and research on to make sure that they'll still be around in five or 10 years. Cause that's the last thing you want to do is go to school for two years and be like, man, you know, they're not going to be around anymore. Right. So something to think about. The next cool one that I think it's pretty nice if you're computer savvy and you like computers is a PAX administrator. Um, again, RT first, then you go to PAX administrator and you take a, re there's a registry for everything guys. <laughs> so you take a registry for PAX administration. This is actually a pretty cool job because you get away from the patient care vibes, you know, cause after a certain while, everybody gets burnt out. It gets tough, you know, you get, you know, you're, you're, you can only do something for so long, you know? Um, so it's cool to be a PAX administrator because they get paid very well. They get paid between 80 to 90 a year. Um, I'm guessing 35, maybe 40 an hour. Um, and the cool thing about PAX administrator, like I said, that you don't have to worry about patient care so much, but how to make sure that the images are crossing over properly. And if something isn't working, it's on you. So having an RT and a little bit of IT, you know, background will really, you know, set you perfectly for this position. And these careers are um, popping up even more, you know, as time comes because everything's digital now. Everything's, you know, um, the PAX is so big now that everybody needs a PAX administrator, not even one, they might need two, you know, so that's something that's on a rise, you know, um, so that's kind of cool. Now, the last one is this. RA. So radiology assistant. It's not it's not a radiology technologist assistant. It's kind of hard to like distinguish both whenever you're applying for it. But a RA is basically a six year program. You're an RT first, you get your bachelor's, then you get your master's in radiology technology radiology assistant. And basically what they do is that they help the radiologists do the exams that the radiologists don't have time for. They don't have the power to read images, so they can't sit there and be like, oh, there's an x-ray, send it to the RA, they're going to give you a result. They can't do that. But what they do have the power to is to do all like the um, the floral exams. You know, what I mean by floral is like your small bowel exams, um, your barium swallows, your BEs, um, your lumbar punctures. They have that knowledge to do those, but they don't have the knowledge to actually give you a real result. You know, um, so basically they do what the radiologists either don't want to do or they don't have time to do. Um, this is one of those things you have to do your due diligence again, you know, because a RA, you can only, once you become a RA, you can only do a RA job, you know, and you're stuck in radiation all day long. And you get the, you know, as much as you protect yourself, you still get a great amount of radiation because of the fact that you're doing what the radiologists don't want to do. Now, um, so it's up to you guys, you know, whatever you feel is better for you. Um, I think it's one of those jobs again that, you know, it's tough, man, because the work life balance is okay, but still you get stuck in things that the radiologists don't want to do, and it's a lot of radiation. So I know it's a lot in radiology, a lot of people like to go for it because they're like, oh, it's cool, you press a button. Don't get me wrong, it's a great career, you know, you make good money, you live a good lifestyle. Um, but you know, it's not as easy as people think, you know? Um, but the cool thing is that you do have other avenues to, to go by, like all these ones that I mentioned, you know, um, ultrasound, CT, MRI, PACS, MAMO, nuclear medicine, PACS administrator, RA, 
Um, and that's not even counting, you know, if you want to get into the leads, you know, you can be a lead tech, a manager, a director. Um, so there's a lot, there's a, there's a lot of growth and it depends how far you want to go and how far you take it, you know, and everything is up to you. And of course, the most, the more modalities you have, the better chances of you always having a job. Um, and these days I think, you know, COVID changed the game a lot. So COVID, you know, opened up the the job market, to be honest, because now people want to travel. And then that's another thing you can do. I didn't even mention that. You can travel. Once you become a tech for six months to a year, you can travel and, you know, um, make 2000 to 3000 a week and travel the U.S. for free. They pay everything. They pay room. They pay your flight. They pay your food every day. They pay you. Um, it's just so much that comes. So many perks that come with traveling if you're single. You know, if you have a family and you have kids at home and a wife, that's going to be hard or a husband. That's going to be hard to come by because you're going to be gone for three months, you know, and that's kind of tough. Um, but anyway, guys, I hope that this this video helped you guys as always. Uh, thank you for the support. Thank you for watching. Thank you for showing love as always. And, you know, I'll be back.